I'm here with a Welsh actor who's taken Hollywood by storm and is now doing the same in the music world. It's the amazing Luke Evans! <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. The big love for you in the house today. This is very nice. Well, it's all right, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's a break from the norm for you. Absolutely. And uh, I, if I could get a round of applause with everything I did. Yes. <laughs> but, <I'd> yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll organise that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we're just going to... I know you're a big lover of food. And I know, I'm surprised you get time to do any cooking, to be honest with you. But uh, moussaka is another one that you're a big lover. Love it. So I'm going to show you how to cook a moussaka. The moussaka, we've got all the ingredients over here. I've got some a uh, little bit of oregano there. We've got some cumin. We've got some coriander, uh, uh, some uh, cinnamon, sorry, and we've got a little bit of garlic, some uh, onions, some lamb mince, some wine, and, and we're just going to throw everything in a pan and get that started. Is that Welsh lamb? It is Welsh lamb, of course, exactly. Good. So, so well, first of all, I want to talk about grow, growing up in Wales. Okay. It's slightly different to Hollywood. <laughs> it, couldn't, <laughs> it couldn't be more different. But you couldn't have imagined, could you, as a career that you had? No, no, none of this was planned. None of the. I'd like to say it was all a big master plan of mine, but no, it wasn't. It was. Um, was it ever in a dream of yours? Nothing, nothing. No, like I, my dad's a builder, my mum's a cleaner. You know, we. But they were both into music. We answered the music yeah, in a minute. They, they liked were... music. We, yeah. We had like 45s, you know, my, they were quite young when they had me, so they were still in the music, the record buying part of their life. And yeah. so I, I, I grew up with like 45s of, you know, David Bowie, the Beatles. You know, but Welsh music, sir. You got, I mean, you got. Are we always there? Well, that's always around, you know. Whether watching the rugby or you know with the friends on the weekend in the, yeah. in, the in a pub or something. Um, yeah, Welsh music. Music's always around Welsh people. Because really. although you travel, you still got that Welsh twang in your voice as well. I do, I do. Well, you know, whenever I'm around somebody with an accent, like yourself, you've like got me. an accent. Yeah. <laughs> mine comes out, and I love it. You know, always fascinates me how small the United Kingdom is and the diverse amount of accents there are everywhere, and it's it's a wonderful thing. It is a wonderful thing. So we're just going to throw this lot, th throw this lot in as well. But I want to talk about how how you end up from from Wales to to London because you you went there with a dream of uh, of acting on stage mm -hmm. and, and 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 musicals and stuff like that before bit the big screen. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. was that transition for you for a boy from Wales moving down to London? Because that must have been a. I remember I remember going down to London when I was a young kid, yeah. sixteen years old. It's a, didn't like it. I, it was a massive... It, 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 it takes a while for you. You either love it or hate oh, it. Took me yeah. a while, I think. Oh, I was ready. Right. <laughs> you were ready. I was, re I was ready at 12 years old to move to London, but right. um, I waited till I was 17. Like, so, uh, I arrived the day Princess Diana actually died. Can you imagine? I turned up in a city that was grieving. It was a surreal thing, but, yeah. Wow. Yeah, but wow. Um, love, love the city, and, and considering and... I came from such a small little village, you know, I, I sort of... I've, I've loved it. Well, the city went on to love you because, I mean, the West End as well. You, you, then, you then do this, you get the scholarship, you're, you're, you're studying music, you're studying uh, acting and everything else, and then, then to go into musicals like you did... Yeah. You, you, I mean, you were going in some, some, some amazing, amazing parts, but am yeah. amazing, you know, really established musicals. Yeah, some big ones, some original shows. The first show I ever did was I was, tw I was 20, 21. Um, and uh, the year 2000 was my first show in the West End, and uh, yeah, did some big ones: um, Miss Saigon, Taboo, The Boy George musical, uh, Avenue Q. Um, sometimes I was the lead, sometimes I was supporting was actor. It, was, was it the acting that got got you that, or was it the the the, the music, the the singing? Well, it, I... to be a musical theatre, you have to be able to sing, but I think you know, musical theatre actors also have to be able to act through their singing, you know. Yeah. So. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a quite a thing to do. And then do it live and eight times a week, you know. It's very different a... to what you're doing now, you know. It's... Well, yeah, now what I do, you know, in, in film and TV, you work 12 hours a day. It ends up being around a 14-hour day. So, you know, my work ethic is, is strong, you know. Yeah. I, I like working. That's your Welsh upbringing, you see. Yeah. That's, that's what that is. Well, yeah, we're working class lads, you know, and we all know how to, you know... So we're going to get on to what happened food. afterwards, but tell, tell me about the music then, because you're here to tell us about this. This is... This I is, hope your hands are clean, James. They're, they're clean, they're clean. That's I've the just, first album I've even seen. You haven't even seen this, No, have no. no. Let me have a look. There you go. Good, because I've got another one. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. yeah look at that. It's really amazing. You you, this is the first time you've yes. seen this? Yes. They've only just been printed just for you, James. Yeah, but look, you've got oh, the... That's amazing. ...proper CD in it. Look at that. You must, amazing. you must pinch yourself, because it's like, a, a, like publishing a book, isn't it, really? Because there's something close to your heart with this. Wow, yeah, I mean... You can tell from your face, look. Yeah, it's like... It's, it's mad. It's yeah. mad, and it's... <laughs> you know, it's, it was made with 
with a dream. And this is like, to do it a second time and to, and to really have the opportunity to, to think of all the other amazing songs I wanted to sing and then, you know, have the opportunity to sing with an incredible orchestra. I've been writing with an amazing songwriter called Amy Wodge. And she's I had lots of ideas. Talking about that, mate, you just dropped in a name. She's written for some amazing... From Diana Ross to Ed Sheeran and uh, <laughs> uh, uh, literally, like, Andrea Bocelli. And then she's a fellow Welsh person like me and um, we just clicked the second we met. And uh, we met just before COVID happened. Right. I then went to the States, spent my lockdown in the States, and she was in her home in, in South Wales. And we used to Zoom and write together every week just to pass the time, you know. Because this is one of the tracks on the album. Two of the tracks. Two, two tracks on yeah. the album. So. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't um, play one of them anyway. Tell, tell me about... Well, track three on the album is yeah. called Horizons Blue. And it was... Um, I think it was the second song we wrote together. And I... Uh, I wrote, them, I wrote the lyrics really quickly. I didn't really know what I was writing. I was just writing, rhyming, you know, poetry, you know. This, That's this sort of what songs Because you, you were there in the sunshine, were you? Is that, is that the reason why...? Well, yeah, yeah, I did have a blue horizon that day, and, uh, and obviously there was no one... I rented this little, this little house on the beach. I mean, it sounds very glamorous. It wasn't that glamorous, but it, it felt very nice because the beach was empty, and all, all the wildlife had come back, and so I was just looking out to the ocean, it was magical, and I just, you know, we were all going through like this worry and, 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 and anxiety of what was going to happen. There was no, there was no, um, uh, um, you know, vaccination at that point, so we were all living in a little bit of fear and worry for our loved ones. But I had a very optimistic moment that morning, and I saw horizons blue, it reminded me of of good things and positive things. And so I, you know, Adele is one of my favorite artist. She writes about love, loss, happiness, finding it, losing it, whatever. And I thought, I'm going to try and write one of my own. And well, that's what I came up with. Shall we see what the end result was, right? Because we've got it now, so we've got it for you to listen. But here we go. In that moment we were chosen and we knew We decided our horizon should be blue Anywhere that you will go, I will go there too in that moment I was chosen to fall in love with you, to fall in love with you. A man of many talents, a man of many talents. Amazing. So we've got our aubergines over here. The, the lamb mince, you, you want to cook this. I've just put everything in. And you cook this lamb mince. Uh, you want to cook it for a good sort of 20 minutes, uh, something like that. Season it up, allow it to cool down slightly. And we've got our aubergines over here. So we're just going to colour these nicely. The key to this is try not to add too much. Aubergines contain quite a lot of, well, they're like a sponge. And the temptation is to add more and more oil into it. And then all of a sudden they just dump them out. Um, so we're just going to take this off to one side, let that cool down slightly. I've warmed up my milk, and now onto our little sauce that we've got in here. So we're going to take our little sauce. This is the the white sauce where you take some butter. There we go. So look, in this house we use quite a lot of butter. So how to make bechamel sauce. So this is how to make it. Now the temptation is to measure butter. You're just looking at it. You just chuck it in. <laughs> just chuck it in. Um, you just chuck it in. And, and the key to this, salted really... Salted butter or unsalted butter? It makes no difference to this, because we're going to season it anyway. So what you do is you start off with a whisk. Plain flour, and it happens quite quickly. You've got to be quite confident with this. A lot of times, with white sauces, it can go lumpy, because you're not confident with it. Is that because you've got to stir it all the yeah. time? Yeah, so you can see now we've got this. Then we throw in the flour. Oh, all in one go? Yeah. Mm, so then wouldn't be the roux that. itself... I'm terrified. Is, is, the roux itself is, is not too thick. Then... We grab our milk, and now we start adding it. But there you have your white sauce. Easy as that. So if you wanted to put a little bit of cheese in it, cauliflower mm. over the top, Mornay. A little Mornay. bit of mustard, maybe, but that's, that's your nice little white sauce. Done. Wow. wow. You can put an egg yolk in there, bit of salt, bit of pepper, and now we start to layer it all up. So I'm going to bring this over, and we're going to layer this layer this, mous this moussaka up and then just bake it in the oven. So tell me about the, 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 the film career, because we're going to talk about that a little bit later on, but there's so much to talk about in terms of your film career. Your first... You, you, kept, you sort of got into it slightly later, didn't you, Early? Um, was it 29, something like that, you got into it? Yeah, yeah, it was late. Yeah, I, I spent... Um... 
eight years doing musical theatre, and, um, and uh, at around 26, 27, I made a pact with myself that if it wasn't gonna, if I wasn't going to be moving the needle at all in in the in, in the business, I was going to leave it at 30. Really? Yep, I decided, and I wasn't. It didn't bother me. I had a good run, but I was like, I need to. What is that? Because they're just not works. Because I mean, There's you're not in... enough money in it. <laughs> I wasn't. Like, I, wasn't <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't able to like save any money. I was thinking I'm an only child. I got to look after my mum and dad. And I was like, I just wasn't been able to save. I didn't. Couldn't save. You know, London's an expensive place anyway. So I'd made a decision, and then, and then uh, the movie and the movie thing happened. Just. <laughs> The movie thing just happened. Just, it just sort of didn't film? just happen, but it sort of came out of the blue because I'd, I'd managed to get myself into a play at the Don Mar Warehouse, which was, uh, was something I never thought I'd be able to do. And um, from that, I got an agent in America, I got a manager in America, and within eight months, I was in my first movie, which was Clash of the Titans, and I just wrapped my 45th movie last night. 45? That deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? I mean... <laughs> And you, you're, you're still only still only 36. That's still only 30, 36. 36 next week. Exactly. Look, we're going to take this this now. We'll just finish this off because we're going to talk. Like I said, we'll talk about all your music career. But look, you've oh got my your oh god, look at that. So that's your white sauce, your classic white sauce that we just put over the top like that. It originated in Greece. Greece, right? yeah, Greece. There's, like I said, there's, there's variants of it all over the place. So, so different countries will have their own variants of it. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it doesn't have to be the same in each of the places. So, a little bit of cheese. Cheddar. This is a bit of cheddar. I so. made um, shepherd's pie two nights ago from scratch, and I put um, pecorino cheese on top of it. That's fantastic. Well, pecorino cheese is the one that they put on pizzas. Yeah. So you know why pizza tastes salty? Yeah. They don't use buffalo milk, they use cow's milk and use pecorino cheese. And then when you bake it, it's got that lovely salty crust. Is that what it is? That's pecorino. So what we can do is just pop this straight in here. And then this is one that's been in the oven. Look. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then wow. this one goes back in here. And you want to cook this for about 30 minutes, because don't forget, everything's cooked anyway. It's already cooked, yeah. You can, yeah, if everything's hot out. and you assemble everything hot, you've just got to put it in the grill. But season each layer as you go. And then we'll just serve <laughs> this. And then it's ready to eat. So we'll just bring this across. You make it look so easy, James. Well, <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is, this is, this is like, um, it's, it's, just, it's just like eating volcanic rock, to be honest. This is it's a bit hot. Yeah. But we'll let it cool down slightly. But I'm Welsh. Everything is piping hot in Wales. But look. I mean, I just remember this is this is how I had moussaka. This this layer of stuff on. I love this. Don't get me wrong, lasagna is ace, but moussaka is just yeah. It's those old Probably bits. Healthier without the pasta, maybe. Oh. <laughs> no, with all that cheese on the top. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the amount of. Oh, don't about that. You just ignore the half pack of butter that you're missing. That's on there, and then we just took a few bits of leaves. But mm. there you have it. It's a nice little simple dish. Some things to eat to start with. Hopefully you like that one. Done. <laughs> there we have it. Your first dish. What? Save room for your ham, egg and chips a little bit later. Oh, don't worry. I can eat. <laughs> I can eat. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's delicious. Wow. It's lovely, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a great dish. Really, really good. There you go. Um, he's happy with that. That and a good actor, I know that. Uh, mm. They'll be cooking a second course for Luke at the end of the show, and Chef Claire Smith will be putting her three Michelin star twist on a simple potato, very surely. But join us after the break. You're enjoying that, are you? Oh, my God. Absolutely. <laughs> join us again after the break with my good friend Richard, Richard Corrigan. We're firing up the stoves outside. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to the last part of the show. But this one's going to be special. I'm back in the kitchen with all my guests, Luke Evans, Claire Smith and Richard Corrigan. <laughs> now, I've got to say, we've never had this, three of us cooking together. So this is going to... Be... Going to be a disaster, I, I, possibly. <laughs> possibly. This, we've got Mr. Corrigan on chip duty. Yeah. Claire Smith on fried eggs. 
who's never practised this. No. I've told her she needed to practise it. She's now decided that to come in raw and just try it. Uh, and then I'm on ham and um, parsley sauce duty. Is that all right? Just stick we, to your zones, guys. We're just going to stick to our zones. But you're here. We want to talk about this album as well, because we played a lovely little uh, uh, song earlier, a song that you'd written as well. Yeah, yeah. Just remind us about the album, because this is the first time you've seen it, so you can see yeah, it again. Yeah, you can hold it a second yeah, time. Yeah, hold on, look yeah, at that. No, um, th yeah, there's two original tracks on the album. There's, um, there's some really famous covers. And um, there's... But you, you, you're not scared about going. I mean, some of these. The I Sinatra, told you, James, you've got to throw yourself into the. Some of these are starter, starter tracks. You know, you're, you're, you're not frightened of throwing yourself into the deep end. Well, also, a lot of these songs I've been singing my whole life. So um, the only difference is I was doing it professionally now with an orchestra and a choir and, and um, doing it for real, which is almost, uh, you know, it's like a dream come true in a way, you know, when you get to do something for real and. So there's, um, there's two people that you, you sing, sort of sing duets with it, this, this that's year. That's right, yeah, yeah. Nicole Kidman, how did that come up? Because this is a bit of the Hollywood thing. We've got to mention this. Yeah, my day. Hollywood friend, Go Nicole on, Kidman. Tell, tell, us, yeah. tell us about this thing. Well, I did a show, which I think is actually on TV in the UK right now, called uh, Nine Perfect Strangers. Yeah. We shot that in, Aus in Australia during the last part of the lockdown, and um, you know, it was with Melissa McCarthy, Bobby Cannavale, Michael Shannon, Nicole Kidman and many other wonderful actors. And I became very close to, to Nicole, and um, I knew that she had liked my first album. She said her and Keith Urban, multi-Grammy award-winning artist, had listened to my album. So I'm thinking, this is crazy. Uh, just chuck it in. <laughs> and then, you know, I started uh, thinking about the concept for the second album, and I thought I'd love to do some duets. And I thought, you know what? If you don't ask, you, don't, you never know. And I thought, I'm not going to have that. Love it. I'm going to make sure I... Uh, I'm going to try and uh, see if she would do it. And, and I called her up and offered up the idea, and she said straight away, yes. I was like, really? So, so you, we, 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 we mentioned the sort of the tour. Would, would they ever, would you like to go? Because I, I get the feeling, you know, you got the album out now. There must have been a possibility of doing a tour and bits and pieces, or in the back of your mind, because you love the West End, you love the stage putting the two together, but I suppose timing-wise for you... Yeah, but you can fit it in. You just need a good, uh, you need a good team to schedule it, and, and uh, I've, I work very closely with my team, and we are definitely looking to do some live shows. I mean, you know what it's like. You, you, you do tours and shows, and there's nothing like standing in front of, uh, you know, a crowd of people and all cheering, loving what you do, and... He yeah. came to the last one. Did, I did remember, I was... How was it? Unbelievable. <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh, I I'm was shocked. Coming. Really? It, I was... Full House Palladium. Yeah. Oh. Standing ovations, 20 minutes. Incredible. <laughs> My son said, who's James <laughs> Martin? <laughs> <laughs> I was asking myself that every night, to be honest with you, when we're on it. Incredible. <laughs> no, so I think it is something I definitely want to do. But we're, we're looking at, I mean, looking at the restaurant business, doing what we're doing, you know, it's hard enough just doing two restaurants, yeah. bits and pieces, three, four over there. Wow. In terms of film, how do you... How do you figure it all out? Because to do that many films, I'm assuming you're cross-shooting, you're overshooting... Yeah, you're I'm doing... often, like, doing a movie, learning the lines for another one. Or, I mean, this, this last movie I wrapped very late last night. How many in years London. in advance are you doing? You must be, must be looking at... Um, I got things set for um, <laughs> mid to late 2023. Looking into yeah. 2024, so things have got to be. You've got to be organising yourself. You have to, but not me. It's, I, like this is a this is a lot of other people managing <laughs> all that stuff. I just got to turn up and do my thing, which well, is anyway, uh, you do it do it very well. Look, I've just got on here. This this life's too short to show this on camera, um, but you know I feel like I'm wasting ten minutes of a life that I'll never get back uh, if I do this. But these these are little cloves, and you basically stud the cooked cold ham with cloves all over the top. You take some of your... This is marmalade. You've got some beautiful Seville marmalade. Pour it over the top, 200 degrees, pop it in the oven. Then that cooks for about sort of 20 minutes. Keep basting it. We end up with this. Which da, is da, da, da. Oh, my da, God. Da, Look da, at da, da, da. that. How many times did you baste that? Uh, this is about six times. This That's one. a good ham. It's a good ham? That's a good Does ham. Does it match the chips and the eggs, though? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm worried slightly now, yeah? <laughs> That's a ham. Those chips are getting so much attention, I'm amazed. The eggs are getting so much attention. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Oh, Did you yeah. flick any fat over the top of it? A little bit of fat on top, yeah. Can you do another few more? Is that right? Can you do two more, Chef? Thank yeah. you very much. It's because we got hungry. hungry. <laughs> yeah. I never thought I would have Claire Smith doing fried eggs <laughs> on my show at my house. Together. I never thought I would be sitting here being... <laughs> 
fed <laughs> by three incredible <laughs> chefs. I mean, you haven't I'm, tasted it yet. And I'm not paying for it. Look, look. It's amazing. The, the pressure of cooking ham, egg and chips is, is, is immense. Oh. Look, but you just got this little oh bit my of... God, stop it. over the top like this. Over the top. It's, like, it's like almost that. a How nice it. is that? And then... <laughs> you can cut that bit out. <laughs> I'm going to then take a slice. <laughs> we'll just take a nice piece. In fact, take a bigger knife. How does it not um, fall apart? Well, I think because you, you cook it, let it go cold in the... The key to it is once it's cooked... Three-star treatment, look at that. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> once it's cooked, you want to let it go... Uh, we want it to cool down in the, uh, in, in the pan. So as it cools down in the can, it'll f sort of firm up. If you try and... Try so and leave the string on it. Yeah, I'll leave the string then. on it, then take it all out when it's cold, and then gradually wrap it up. But we're then going to grab that. Well done, you Chef. You don't like who you're cooking for. You leave a couple of cloves in the middle. You can leave a little cl couple of cloves in the middle, but, yeah, just... But <laughs> that is stunning. Bit of that. Just watch your cloves. There we go. We've got the fried eggs on, the, on route. Bit of that. Chips, Out of the way. Chips, thank you very much, Chef. Thank you very much. Wow. I love this. This is... How many good chips? Michelin star chefs. Look at, Look at this. chips. So, a bit wow. of that. Oh my God. God. There's not going to be anything left to this, so yeah. you just... Uh, thank you very much. Maybe two. Oh, go on. Confidence of a glass of good red wine. Mm. Oh, my God. Let's take a bit of that. Put that on there. <laughs> that on there. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty, isn't it? It's Chips. the blanching thing. Which yeah, you don't need I, that steaming sort of thing, Corrigan. Just blanch them. Look. Right. If you do them a little bit, bring them out and put them back in. They've got a bit of a blossom. Yeah. Look at that. And then we've got this. this. We've got our fried eggs. Wow. We've got a little bit of a parsley sauce. Cooked how my granny used to do. A little bit thick. Fried egg. That one, Chef? Yeah. That one. That one you want. A bit of white truffle. You'll be home Ooh. and dry now, James, sir. Mm. Mm. White truffle. And I'm going to take these fried eggs. Thank you very much, Claire. Sorry to put you under pressure like this. And we're going to put these all the way around your fried no. eggs and your ham. Not a cracked yolk in sight. No. Three eggs for three mission stars. How was that for you? Incredible. Look at that. There we have it. I don't think this ever be repeated again on TV. We're only doing it because it's, this, it's Christmas as well, and you're here. <laughs> but there we have it. The world's most expensive... <laughs> I'm egg and chips. Done. <laughs>